I just honestly wanted to be able to document this because Ricky the Dragon Steamboat did just come back or did just resign or sign whatever you want to call it he signed I wanted to document this asking Ricky Steamboat to come back for another run because I did this with I believe Medusa and Jerry Lawler King came back for another run which allowed him for to be considered an occasional wrestler and I'm hoping that Ricky Steamboat could come back because I would love not just Ricky Steamboat to be back back in the ring, but maybe have him return for the Royal Rumble and do something in the lead up to WrestleMania because we are in October. So I think the best time to start thinking about WrestleMania, there's it's never too early to start thinking about the showcase of the Immortals. And October is the perfect time for that. So without any delay and any other background, let's see if Ricky Steamboat will come back for another run. And Ricky Steamboat is back for one more run. He is coming out of retirement. He is coming out of retirement for one more run. I just realized out I, I just realized I actually could have asked him to come back as an occasional wrestler as opposed to a regular wrestler, but that's just me. Um, you know, maybe I'll look next time. But uh, either way, I mean, if you want to put it into perspective, Jerry Lawler still works, and he's in his 70s. But I guess maybe I did the same. I thought I did the same thing with Lawler, but I guess maybe I didn't. Either way, I also wanted to document Raw because um because i am because i am in the process of booking one of my favorite episodes of raw because it is right after taboo tuesday when randy orton secured the wwe championship his first world's championship and the fact of the matter is I'm doing it a little different. Rebook it. This is rebooking the legend killer. And Randy Orton is not going to turn face. He's going to stay heel as world's champion. He's going to stay heel as the world champion. And Triple H... Everybody wants answers from Randy Orton. Jonathan Coachman is considered the interim Raw general manager after Eric Bischoff was fired by Vince McMahon or reassigned, as he put it, by Vince McMahon. And Stephanie has been sort of uh, Stephanie has been sort of the uh, taking coach under her wing, for lack of a, for lack of a better word. She has been taking coach under her wing the last couple of weeks since coach became interim general manager. But Randy Orton is conspicuous by his absence as people are blaming specifically Chris Jericho and Stephanie and wonder if it was Chase Stevens under a mask that helped Randy Orton win at Taboo Tuesday because a maxed man did help Randy Orton. Uh, a a maxed man ascended from, ring, from the ring. A maxed man ascended on the match and it was the... It, it was a similar unknown figure that interrupted Batista's match a couple of weeks ago against Chris Jericho and cost Batista his match against Chris Jericho. But now 
what has been a, a civil discussion between evolution or among evolution with, between Randy Orton and, and Triple H specifically may not be as civil as it once was because of the fact that Randy Orton has now taken it upon himself to clearly hire someone to clearly hire someone to help him as an insurance policy and he basically stole the WWE Championship from Triple H and Chris Jericho. It is the second month in a row, though, that Jericho has seen the title stolen from him. By dubious means. But the one thing that we know is that the Dudley Boys are back in tag team action tonight. As Stephanie McMahon said at Taboo Tuesday that she wanted the Dudleys to go back to the tag team division after being out of the tag team division for the last couple of months or the last couple of weeks since losing the titles to Mondo and Matt Hardy. I'm not going to say that Mondo and Matt Hardy are going to defeat or uh, be challenged by the Dudleys, but what I will say is You know, what I will say is, um, <coughs> what I will say is that, well, uh, Mondo and Matt Hardy will be getting a new challenger. That's what I was going to say. Mondo and Matt Hardy will be getting a new challenger very soon in Billy Gunn and Maven, who defeated, who finally dispatched Conway and Grania, I mean Con Conway and Garrison Cade at Taboo Tuesday, and Billy Kid Billy Gunn will end his feud with Chuck Palumbo tonight on Raw. Hunter at first says no, but then he sa then he starts to think about it for a second and considers the idea that maybe, just maybe, it might have been Chase Stevens who helped because there's no way for him to actually know considering the fact that the man who helped Randy Orton win the title at Taboo Tuesday was wearing a mask. And... Triple H is not the only one that needs convincing. Are ready to challenge for tag. I know that Maven and Billy Gunn started a t started as a team in July, and soon after they started as a team, Maven actually got injured, so it kind of curtailed things for them. But part of rebuilding the tag team division is giving the new teams the opportunity to be featured in the spotlight that they may not have gotten in a different under a different set of circumstances. But speaking of people getting featured in the spotlight that may not have been featured in the spotlight under a different set of circumstances... Um, Rico has not really been featured. I was going to do something with him and Lance Storm, but I changed my mind. You know, I like Rico. I'm more than likely going to switch him over to SmackDown. But right now, he's still on Raw, clearly. You know, and for example, you know, for example, with Chuck Palumbo... Chuck was on uh, SmackDown earlier in the year, but Chuck is also one of those guys that I actually pretty steadily have kept on the show since he moved over to Smack, since he moved over to Raw. 
Um, he feuded with Chris Jericho right at the outset, right as Chris Jericho was about to win the world title as well. And then he, by the end of the summer, was in a tag team with Billy, Gibb, uh, Billy Gunn. And, you know, he spent the last four months pretty much wrapped up, uh, regularly featured on television. So, I mean, it's been good for Chuck, but the problem is Chuck's popularity has not gone up or down. It stayed stagnant. You know, that's the problem. That I like Chuck Palumbo, I do, much like I like Mark Gingerak, but the problem is Chuck has not Chuck has stagnated. He has not he has not gone one way or the other, and that's the biggest problem, that he has not gone one way or the other, he's just stagnated. That if he went one way or the other way, it would have at least given me the opportunity to have the have the chance to you know to have the chance to i don't know um see what he has to offer but i can't do that with uh going in the direction that we're going You know what I mean? Like, animal... Occupy time that could be given... with actual futures is shameful. The other thing that I haven't been doing is giving people like Kenny King or like uh, Jamie Noble or, you know, like the younger guys, promo time. And yes, I know, oh, you're feeding, you're actually going to feed Kenny King to Road Warrior Animal. I am only because Road Warrior Animal is still wrapped up in a feud with Rene Dupree, as it is my way of trying to get Rene Dupree over. It's so far so good. You know, it so far has been working out quite well. You know, it so far has been working out quite well, to be honest. And actually, I think I may include Rene, not Earl Hepner, Rene. On commentary, and he did confrontation. <clears throat> Triple H. wants an answer from Chase Stevens was it him is a bit insulted but then says no it wasn't But again, that's not the last time we will see Chase Stevens on the card tonight. I've been trying to keep the women's roster together, but the problem is... I mean, the problem is the same problem as I had with the men's roster that you have the people down here, and unfortunately for the heels, there's just heels. That's it. There's just heels down here. Am I letting go of Jazz? I forget. 
I forget, to be honest with you. But I do have women coming up, so it's going to, you know, strengthen the women's roster. You know, I got Melita down here, Mickey James, Mercedes Martinez, um, Nikita. I mean, I, I do have women down here. And maybe I should look into getting other women to improve the status. But right now, that's all I got. But pointing out, it's 1-1. One, one. <coughs> I am also looking at the possibility of redoing, redoing the show and refocusing the company because I don't like the fact that they they limit what I can and can't produce as far as if a match is too... Like, even a ladder match. I can't do a ladder match because it doesn't fit my audience. Think about WWE's audience during this time and tell me a ladder match does not fit the audience. Like, are you kidding me? That's a little far-fetched in my opinion. You know, that, that, that is a little far-fetched, in my opinion. Next week, I will do an open challenge match. Anyone to challenge me for the... Intercontinental Championship. <laughs> Test attacks Christian. Test attacks Christian. I gotta rework. I got. I have. I do have to rework Mister Scott Hall's contract because Scott Hall can't stick around. Problems. 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 I might. I might either shoot Booker T in a tag team to help replenish the tag team division a little bit more, or I may send Booker and Rico over to SmackDown. It's a little bit harder to say that I want to send certain people over to SmackDown now, considering the fact that SmackDown is... Uh, considering the fact that the draft is right after WrestleMania, and it may make more sense just to keep the people together until after the draft and have that happen, but that's just me. So I think the ideal thing would be Let me try and figure this out. Let me try and figure this out. And that, that way that could be beneficial for me in the long run. 
But I also just want to check this out. And I... was actually correct. Rob has been pretty, you know, academic with his action, but Rob Van Dam has never competed for the WWE Championship in 2004. So, Sean wants his shot against Randy. And coach announce he wants that he's giving RVD a shot first. Basically, coach says that he likes the idea of Sean versus Randy, but is giving Rob Van Dam a fresh challenger the opportunity ahead of Shawn Michaels just because he wants someone new and different to challenge the world's champion when in reality honest you know the god's honest truth is all i want the only reason why i want rob van dam in that position as opposed to randy orton is because i could put randy orton over without having to worry about it and i could save Shawn michaels versus randy orton which is what the intention is to save Shawn michaels versus randy orton The main reason why I want to change the outlook of the shows or like the focus of the company is because it would give me the opportunity to then it would give me the opportunity to then have um it would give me the opportunity to then have um longer matches and not just have to focus on you know, still have the angles but also have the opportunity to do longer matches on, on television shows. So instead of having to worry about having two 10-minute matches or 8-minute matches as it is, I could actually give the main event 10, 12, 15 minutes and not have to worry about it like I do now. You know... I, I, this way I can this way I don't have to worry about it like I do now. I do know the difference is is that it is affected over time as opposed to you know it is affected over time as opposed to um, instantaneous, but it may be a benefit in the long run, to start slowly but surely changing the focus of the product, which is something that I'm thinking about. Again, as the main goal for me in 2004 is to rebuild WWE, to have stability for the future and a direction for WWE going forward that may not be what happened in real life, but also may be better than what they did in real life because I would say until probably 2000, they did it, WWE really didn't find footing overall until like 2007 2008 because i think 2007 to 2009 was pretty solid and then slowly but surely things started going downhill as wwe took a while to find their footing partially because of mistakes like they did with randy orton turning it babyface Were his plans coming together? And everyone will know the truth in his time. At his convenience. <coughs> Not at... Actually, this should get longer but that's but that's my point like i shouldn't have to worry about a match going six minutes well i'm worried about a match going six minutes because of the because of the 
time that I, that is allotted to me for the show more than anything else. But I would rather longer matches, shorter segments than longer segments, shorter matches. But either way, Randy basically says that it was his plan that what we saw at Taboo Tuesday was his plans coming together and that we will see his plans and the full reveal on his terms, not by request. But let's see how the show did. You know, but that's what this is one of the reasons why Rico is somebody that I like because he does solid, but I just don't have a direction for him. You know, but that's also what the problem was, as you saw with Matt Morgan in the last video or one of the previous videos. A lot of the guys don't have directions that are in the bottom of the card. And that's something that I want to change because the reason why I they don't have direction is because you get a decrease in ratings if you have an unimportant guy versus an unimportant guy, but how do you expect them to get better if outside of having them lose matches and play the young lion type, you know, the long young lion role, how do you expect them to get better if you don't give them the chance to get better and just eat the ratings for one segment of the show? But the Dudley boys are back in tag team action. Evolution, which is the overarching story for the show and will be for the next couple of weeks. Billy Gunn and Maven ready to challenge for the tag team titles as Billy Gunn's feud with Chuck Palumbo is finally finished. Kenny King did solid in his segment with Road Warrior Animal. Honestly, that was a bit disappointing. Honestly, that was a bit disappointing. I thought this match would do better. Oh, was it? No, it was a wild brawl. Yeah, maybe it was a bad segment to choose to go for that uh, segment. But either way. But this is why I keep pushing Chase Stevens. Even with his inclusion, even with the idea that he is not popular, he still gets solid segments when he's in this, when he's included in segments with people like Triple H. So that's why I keep pushing Chase Stevens, because he keeps doing solid numbers. The ratings stay high with Chase. I am going to be rebooking and reworking the tag team, uh, the women's division, in 2005 and at the end of 2004. Because, well, it was a one-sided division in 2004, and I need to rework it for the future. So Trish and Rene Dupree need to be repackaged. Christian has really hit his stride. Christian was somebody much like Rhino, who I was going to release earlier in the year, because I really just had nothing for him. And then I just had him work the angle where he quit. And then suddenly came back. And since he came back, he worked with Matt Hardy. He worked with Mike Mondo. And he became the Intercontinental Champion. And now he's in a feud with Test. So going from being on the shelf for a couple months and being away a couple months, it gave me the opportunity to think about something to do with him and ch basically choose like, okay, I gave myself this ultimatum. If by the end of Christian's contract, I have nothing for him, he's gone. Same with Rhino. It's either you come up with something for him or you let him go because there's no reason to keep somebody like that on your roster if there's nothing, if you have nothing for him. I mean, I would say that this could have been a feud. But it's just the idea that I really don't know if I wanted to make this one because, you know, Survivor Series is, a, is an anti-promotional pay-per-view, you know, a, a by-branded pay-per-view. So it is a little harder to have that filler from Raw or SmackDown on the show. 
including with the title matches, the bigger matches, and especially wanting to give the bigger matches more time, it is harder to have the filler. So I can have it as a as a television show, you know, a television show feud. But to say that it's a feud that needs to go to a pay-per-view with the fact that Survivor Series is in the position, even though Survivor Series is two weeks away, with the fact that Survivor Series is in the position that it's in, it may be better to just scrap it and just keep it on television. But I am happy that the coach got this type of segment, much like Chase Stevens. The coach is not one of the most popular people in the world, but he did show that working with guys like people like Stephanie McMahon and Shawn Michaels, Triple H, yada, 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 that he's still capable of holding his own. Again, even with this, Chase Stevens was ranked on entertainment. Chase Stevens was ranked on entertainment, and it's still, the segment got an 82. So there is potential there, in my opinion. There is potential there, in my opinion, for Chase Stevens. And Ricky the Dragon Steamboat is, of course, uh, was he the ref? Yes, he was. I didn't even know Ricky Steamboat was capable of being a referee. I'm going to take that away from him, though, because I don't really like the idea of having Ricky on. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think I, I don't think I, I, yeah, I don't think I like the idea of having Ricky as a, as a referee. I think I would be better. I think I would like him better as an announcer. I mean, as a road agent and just having him in the background. But either way, a solid episode of Raw and a solid finish with Randy Orton and Chris Jericho in the closing segments. With Chris Jericho showing he's capable of carrying the show and Randy Orton showing that he's able to that he's capable of closing the show out on a high note. But this is what I mean. I'm not saying that Triple H, Shawn Michaels and the previous guard are past their prime. It was that and showed from pretty much uh, 2002 until 2004 that outside of Triple H and Shawn Michaels, Raw really didn't have much as far as established competitors, and that's what I've been trying to do for the rest for the for the entirety of 2004. And that's why Jericho spent time as world champion. That's why Kane and Booker T are are feuding with each other now. And that's why we've seen what we've seen. It's because I've been trying to rebuild the brand and give some more depth to the main event level than just having Triple H and Shawn Michaels at the main event. But either way, this has been my this has been the last episode of Raw for the month of October as we are on the build to Survivor Series. Let me know down in the comment section below what your thoughts are on the big stories on this episode of Raw as the tension between evolution continues to build and it seems like Randy Orton may have his own plans and that it wasn't accidental to have the Max Man jump in and help Randy win the title and Randy may know the identity of that Max Man from Taboo Tuesday. If you want to see more of this, let me know down in the comment section below. And with that being said, I will see you in the next video.